Hello, Internet. I wanted to do a bit of a rant, or I guess I'd call it a discussion, but there's only me here, so it's not really one of those. Though there is a popular Internet conceit of calling things discussions and pretending that the audience is actually there and having some back and forth, but we're not doing that. Um, I wanted to talk about a recent ramp up of an existing U.S. policy that's kind of a repeat of an old tech policy that we've, we've seen before, um, but new specifics have been added, where the United States has been worried about China and possibly some other prescribed countries, uh, about them having access to recent machine learning um, hardware. And so they've implemented a policy where uh, companies like NVIDIA are not supposed to sell um, uh, Ampere and Hopper class GPUs, and they'll probably designate some additional hardware. But these are high-end GPUs, um, the, the current generations of GPUs that people use for machine learning. And so, the, uh, yes, the, the U.S. government is concerned about China's access to these, these technologies, and so they've implemented export controls. And they're trying to get uh, U.S.-based companies and companies that do a lot of business with the U.S. to participate in this to prevent China and when I say China, I mean presumably a mix of Chinese nationals and the Chinese government com and companies operating in China to prevent them from getting access to current GPUs, which in theory would maybe limit their ability to do recent machine learning things. And there's a lot of reasons why they might be doing something like this, but and we, we could get into reasons, but I, I'm not going to primarily because I don't think that it is possible to reach the desired policy ends. Uh, so we don't even really need to judge the morality of the ends. The policy, in my view, cannot do what it's trying to do. Uh, there is no way that this policy will effectively stop China from having significant access to current GPUs and in particular to have significant access to machine learning workloads. There's a few reasons for this. Um, let me give probably the strongest reason first uh, as to why it cannot keep China, and again, we can divide it out into Chinese nationals and Chinese companies and the government of the, uh, of the People's Republic of China, but it, it effective, uh, the strongest reason why this can't work is that of uh, equivalency and that if you have a certain number of hopper or ampere class gpus and you have a workload that you want to run you can run that same workload on more gpus of a lower class and the export controls are not controlling access to the lower class of gpus so all they would really need to do at simplest if they want to run the same algorithms is just to buy more cheaper GPUs rather than buy uh, fewer uh, fancier GPUs uh, because the they're essentially equivalent for uh, for most purposes what uh, GPUs are mostly doing uh, is similar to what CPUs are mostly doing they're replacing the need uh, like every generation, mostly what it does is it gives you faster computation. And so if you want to, you can make do with older generations. Um, there is a, a, it does potentially make it a bit more expensive. You're going to possibly pay more for power, uh, certainly more for machine room space. But none of uh, none of these the limits as currently designed would stop you from doing whatever computation you want given hardware that we're not controlling so that's that's one really good reason not to do this it's it's not actually stopping um, people from buying hardware uh, it's not stopping Chinese uh, Chinese nationals or 
uh, Chinese companies or the, the People's Republic of China from just buying hardware legally uh, that they can use to get the computations they want done. Um, so that's one good reason not to do it. The second reason is that access to uh, the hardware doesn't require the, the hardware being owned by these groups or even that it be in the uh, territory of the People's Republic of China. Um, you can lease hardware uh, formally or informally from a whole bunch of cloud providers uh, which are located all over the world, many of whom the US government is not going to be able to effectively completely stop them from leasing to uh, Chinese uh, companies or, or the Chinese government operating under the guise of Chinese companies. Um, so th they, they don't need to have the hardware in China. Uh, they, they can get access to it um, remotely via cloud, uh, via informal uh, arrangements. But in, in order to actually have this work, they would need to control all cloud providers everywhere in all countries that, that uh, where these cloud providers might operate, uh, where they might be buying hardware and not care about this policy, not participating uh, in it. And they're not going to do that. They're not going to be able to do that. They might want to do that, but it's not possible for them to build, uh, build something that will effectively stop what they're trying to stop. And I, I find this frustrating because uh, generally if you're going to do some kind of uh, a control like this, you're going to piss off the country that you're trying to keep technology away from. And if you actually have a good reason for doing that, then sure, why, why not? Uh, but if you're imagining a long lasting effective policy of this sort that will not hamper the internet at, uh, at large, then you need to have the policy be able to work, or you're just making uh, you're just making uh, a diplomatic um, grumbliness without any useful um, purpose. Now, there there is a, a possible purpose if you need to be seen as making a stand. Then sure, this is visibly uh, it, it it looks like um, the U.S. government is is making a stand but it's doing so in a way that, that can't work. And so that's a pretty good reason not to do it unless it's domestic policies driving this. Um, like uh, this, is, this is an area where compute is very different from access to, or from having physical material shipped somewhere. Like if you wanna stop weapons from flowing to certain countries, that is potentially doable. It's hard, but it's doable. If you want to stop raw materials of various sorts from reaching certain uh, countries, then you, you can potentially do that. But if you want to stop compute from uh, being accessible, that is just about impossible. And of course, China has the means to respond. Uh, what they can do is limit the export of um, of certain magnetic metals, uh, strong magnets that are used widely in tech. You're basically asking them retaliate in a way where we're hurt and they're not. Um, and that, in my view, just makes it bad policy. We shouldn't be doing this. Uh, and again, this is not a judgment on the motives behind it because they're almost irrelevant if you're doing policy that cannot do what you'd like it to do, your motives don't matter. Um, so that that's it's it's a frust frustration. Uh, I think that in general sh we should be trying really hard not to do policies like this if they can't work. And I'm open to the argument maybe if if somebody can present one that maybe it can work, maybe it has some useful effect. Uh, that's more than just shifting prices a little bit on things. Um, I mean, I, I guess more than a little bit. Uh, if, if, he, if it becomes cost prohibitive to do the kinds of computations that we're actually specifically worried about, 
then that's an argument. But I don't think we've ever heard that argument made because nobody is engaging with the issue that the policy, uh, at least the policy cannot be, it's not that it doesn't even come close to watertight, because most policies aren't. Policy is naturally a blunt in instrument. It's rather that it cannot have a strong effect and it has high risk and uh, associated with it, high economic risk. So that that's what I wanted to lay out here, um, just because I, I'm very frustrated by, by seeing policies like this. Uh, and I, I think that we should be trying really hard to, to craft policies that work well and to avoid policies that don't seem to have any useful effect and that have high likelihood of negative effects. Anyhow, that's what we got for this video. I'm happy to engage in the comments. Bye-bye.